I grew up in the Tri Valley, but it should be really called T R Y Valley, because that defines who we are. We try, we fail, we try, we fail, we try, we're the next major tech company. That's just in our DNA here, and a little bit of that is in your congressman. So I have no, no regrets. I'm excited about what we've done. I think it's actually fitting that today, as we end this presidential campaign, over the last week I've been mentoring and helping a working 34-year-old mother of two kids in the South who is embarking today on what will be seen as a long shot campaign for Congress in the South. But what I've really enjoyed the most about my work is working with and mentoring young people, just like I had leaders work with and mentor me. So campaigns will begin across America in the next few months to reshape the House, the Senate, city councils, and school boards. And I believe that if those campaigns are run on the issues of going big, being bold with the solutions, and doing good in the way that we treat each other, we will see that promise of America fulfilled for all Americans. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Congressman, do you know who you're going to endorse in this field? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed uh, by this field. If uh, Megan Rapahoe gets in the race, I'm probably going to endorse her. I think she turns 35 uh, next July. Not the front runners right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, you know the field. I, I'm not going to make any decisions right now. Uh, look, it's it's a talented field, uh, and that that was one of the challenges I think for us was we had a lot of heavyweights. Uh, in that field. And it, it's going to take more twists and turns. I look forward now to you know, being a citizen uh, watching the debates. Following up on that yeah. question, though, what, what are you looking for as you, as you look at the field and who's there? Uh, what, what are you looking for and what you'd like to see, who you'd like to see be the party standard bearer or anything that you can be President Trump? I think these are issues of the future that we face uh, and we need ideas for the future. So student debt affects 40 million of us, myself included. Climate chaos, we have 12 years before the effects are irreversible. Gun violence as parents, we take our kids to school and we worry all day if we're going to get a call that something has happened. So th these are issues that are, are new and I think it's going to take a next generation of leaders and I, I really believe that the best matchup against Donald Trump is to have somebody who lives in the present but never ever stops thinking about the future. Are you going to yeah. run for Congress? Uh, yes. Yes. You said earlier when you, ran, when you announced your candidacy that you wouldn't run for Congress. I had said that I wouldn't seek both. Uh, our, our attorneys had told us that you could run for both. That decision wouldn't have to come until December, uh, and that if we were still in it in December, uh, I wouldn't seek uh, both. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the polls have had their way, so uh, here we are in July. Uh, I'm excited, as I said, uh, to continue this work. I'm going to leave here, I'm going to an immigration roundtable uh, to address the border crisis, uh, which affects our district with so many migrants uh, and their families coming here. So yes, I'm excited uh, to do that work. And as I, as I said, it's not just running for re-election. It will be imminent issues like the work we have on the Judiciary Committee and Special Counsel Mueller coming before Congress next week. Congressman, yes. what's your, it's not easy to run for president, especially yeah. in such a crowded field. What's your biggest takeaway? What, you, what lessons did you do you value from this experience? Yeah, you know, I, people really do trust you when, when they get those opportunities face to face. They tell you things that they probably only tell their spouses, and they're really counting on you, and they, they still believe that this is a country, you know, of fairness and, you know, order and, and laws, and they're counting on it being that way. And, and so I don't, I don't want to let folks like that down. That's why I get so frustrated with the president, as you see. You, know, you stand in the living rooms of you know, hard-working Americans. You see how hard they've worked to buy their home. They're not asking you know, to live a lavish life and be a member at Mar-a-Lago, but they just want to know that their prescription drugs aren't going to bankrupt them. And so they, they just want, they want you to be straight. They want honesty in their politicians. And they want equal opportunity in their own life. Well, what about you personally? Was it a grind? Was it fun? You know, it was fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was fun to have my, my two-year-old and my eight-month-old out there with me. And in some of these living rooms, you know, you walk in and they immediately jump up to take the kids. It's like they're measuring and weighing your kids as much as they're measuring and weighing uh, the candidates. Uh, you know, my, if I have any regret, it's that my kids won't remember this uh, at all. Um, but 
know, I hope they're proud of, you know, why I ran and, you know, what it meant uh, to other families who wanted a, a champion on gun safety. Do you think the message yeah. of the Democrats is getting out to beat Trump, or is all of this picking at one another, which always happens at this early on, yeah. is, is doing more damage? We need, a, we need a candidate who's tested, I'll, I'll tell you that much, because uh, Donald Trump is the best political puncher ever in American politics. And so whoever we send to that debate stage uh, with President Trump is going to have to be able to take a punch, throw a punch, and then unite the country uh, at the end uh, of the campaign. And that's going to be a very special person. Uh, and so I think this is okay. Uh, this, is, this is needed. I think weaknesses uh, will be flushed out and a leader will emerge. Congressman, yeah. do you think, um, what's your message to some of your fellow candidates who are also perhaps polling at lower numbers? Do you think it's too crowded of a field and time for others to follow your lead? And, and it's, it's, a pers it's really a personal decision. You know, we, we looked at the upcoming debate and the September debate, and we, we had the money in our account to continue to you know, try and qualify for the upcoming debate. Uh, but we believe that even if we had done that, uh, that when you looked at the September debate, it, it just wouldn't add up. And so, again, we wanted to be honest with ourselves and with our supporters. It, I, if, the, if there was a viable chance, I would not be standing here today. You know, I, I would, from day one, was running to win. And if that's what others are doing, uh, then I'm sure they're assessing their chances as well. But if, as soon as it doesn't look like you're likely to win, at least in my case, you know, I, I didn't want to mislead my family, my staff, our supporters, my constituents. Why do you think your campaign didn't take off? What do you think voters are looking for? You know, I, I think it, it was, uh, it is a crowded field. And you had people who, you know, have had, you know, high name recognition. Uh, two of the candidates have run for president before that I stood on the stage with. Uh, you know, we have a, a senator in California who's running who is, she's quite talented and, and quite popular. So, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to, you know, analysts uh, to determine that. I, I'm proud of, you know, the issues we ran on and the team that we had uh, behind us. I just wish I could have done more uh, for them in those issues. Congressman, what were the thresholds that you failed to do? Thresholds, thresholds, was it fundraising, polling, number of donors? When did you decide, all right, I, I'm not going to be able to continue this? Issue? Yeah, you know, the, the polling wasn't moving uh, after the debates, and, you know, the donor number was always going up, but it was never going to reach the point where we could qualify for the, you know, so the September debate is 130,000. And, you know, and, and I, you know what, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I welcome those thresholds. Just as, as someone who's putting everything into it, expecting your family and your staff and your volunteers to put everything into it, like we didn't want to just screw around here. We wanted, you know, to grow with the thresholds. And if we didn't, we were going to get out. And, and so I, those thresholds, I think, are fair. And it's the best way to narrow the field. Yeah, Eric, Joe. Eric, how much did also, uh, you went hard at the NRA in the campaign. Should they take this as a win? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they're, they're at bankruptcy court right now, so you could ask them there. Uh, you know, look, I think the win against the NRA is, is really from Moms Demand Action, the Giffords Group, Every Town, uh, March for Our Lives, Brady. You know, they put them on the ropes, and I was just, you know, a part of that effort, and inspired by that effort. Uh, for us, you know, uh, the final numbers will come out. I think in a week. I, I think ballpark is around eight hundred and. $50,000 is what we raised this past uh, quarter with uh, just under 21,000 uh, new donors for the presidential campaign. Congressman, hindsight is 2020. If yeah. you could go back and redo anything in the Democratic presidential debate, your approach, the topics that you raised, would you have done anything differently? No. No, I, I would have just, you know, taken my kids out uh, with us. They were really popular. We <laughs> <laughs> brought them out more. <laughs> Are you at all concerned yeah. about any uh, backlash in the district from people who, uh, I mean, you're obviously very popular here, but uh, that it could damage you as, as you run for re-election, that you, know, you yeah. might have a viable challenger, at least one person's in the race yeah. already, I don't know if she's going to stand or not. But. You know, I, I don't take anything for granted. Uh, I'm going to go, as I said, right after this meeting, I go meet with constituents about immigration and the border. We've got a town hall coming up in about uh, two weeks. So I, I don't take anything for granted. You know, I, I beat a 40-year incumbent. Uh, in 2012 uh, who had taken the district for granted. And, and you know, I hope the district sees that these issues that I was running on nationally were the district's issues, that people in our district have student loan debt. Our district you know, is seeing sea, water, uh, sea level rise in Union City that could affect uh, communi communities there. Our district you know, sends their kids to schools and worries about 
uh, their safety. We pay, it was a constituent during this campaign who gave me an insulin vial and said, please carry this uh, because it's the only way you'll know how much it costs to me. So you know, the, the issues that I ran on nationally are the issues for my district. And what my district will find is a congressman who's reinvigorated and, and ready to bring these issues front and center. I, I believe because we ran a credible campaign, uh, one that is ending today, but a credible campaign, uh, I'll be able to advocate uh, in an even more effective way for my constituents now. Question. Yeah. Uh, have you spoken to uh, Aisha Wahab about her campaign? I have not, no. Are you worried about a tough re-election vote? You know, I, I welcome anyone uh, who wants to run it. It's what makes our country great is that ideas are tested. I expect there will be other people, you know, who may consider running too. And so uh, I'm not, you know, anyone that wants to run, you know, should run, and I respect anyone who wants to run because it, it is a hard decision to make. Uh, and, you know, I expect that we'll have a number of people in the race. Congressman, you're exiting the race as Tom Steyer is mulling, jumping in. Any advice for him? Um, <laughs> it's, it's rough out there. Uh, but, well, you, know, welcome, you know, welcome to the race, uh, Tom, and uh, yeah, I, I wish him well.